Just like anything can happen in the game you're about to watch, anything can happen in life. That's why there's Westfield Insurance. Our employees and our agency partners are here when the unexpected happens, to help put the pieces back together and give you peace of mind. We also care about our communities by supporting programs like teen driver safety and community revitalization in addition to high school quiz shows. The bottom line is that we value what you value. So thanks for tuning in. Now let's watch these sharp young minds compete in what is sure to be an exciting match. Hi, I'm Josh Moyer, captain of the Cedar Cliff Brain Busters team, and I'd like to remind you that the brown marmaladed stink bug has no natural predators. I'm Shay, and this is Southwestern. From Studio A at WGAL 8, it's Westfield Insurance Brain Busters. Now, here's your host, Rich Rosen. Hello everyone and welcome once again to Westfield Insurance Brain Busters. We're so excited to welcome you here as you are about to witness a half hour of challenging questions and answers. Today it's up to Cedar Cliff and Southwestern. One of these teams will return in round two to challenge Northeastern. So here we go with our opening round. Ten point questions, one big brain buster thanks to Pete Sutt. Good luck to all eight of you. When he died in 1227, this Mongol ruler's empire included two thirds of the known world. Robbie. Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan is the correct answer. It gets less than two inches of rain a year and has a temperature as high as 130 degrees. What is this, Robbie? Sahara Desert. No, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. I'm going to complete the question for Cedar Cliff. What is this vacation spot in California? Josh. Death Valley. Death Valley is correct for 10 points. It is the main artery in your body from which all the others branch. Kafui. Aorta. Aorta is correct. Yes, it first appeared on a bronze two cent piece issued April 22nd, 1864. It's still found on your pocket change. What is this four word phrase? In Carly. God We Trust. In God We Trust, correct. Mathematically, it's a rectangular array of numbers or algebraic quantities. Cinematically, it's the cyber... A matrix. Matrix uh, adventures, of course, of Keanu Reeves. A former general called its hero an ignorant and stupid country lad without a spark of patriotic feeling and even a soldiery, soldiery ambition. In what novel does Henry Fleming make such a poor showing as a soldier? Josh, again. The Red Badge of Courage. You are correct again. Yes, Article 9 of its U.S. imposed constitution, the so-called Peace Clause, renounces the right to use force in its foreign policy. What Asian country is it? Che. The Philippines? No, it is not. I'm sorry. Cedar Cliff. Josh. Japan. Japan is the correct answer. Confederate Generals Jeb Stewart, Joseph Johnson, Stonewall Jackson, and Robert E. Lee all graduated from this military academy. Robbie. West Point. West Point is correct. And uh, its motto is fidelity, bravery, integrity. What is this law enforcement agency? Kafui. SWAT. No, sorry. Oh, yeah. right. Southwestern. Robbie. U.S. Marshals. No, it's the FBI. And now it's time for the big brain buster for 10 points and a gift certificate to Pizza Hut for everybody on your team. Good luck to all eight of you. He won the 2008 Olympic gold medal in tennis. In 2010, he won the French Open, the Wimbledon tournaments, and the U.S. Open. Who is the Spanish? Robbie on the doll. Nadal, congratulations, Southwestern. In the Bible, Jacob changed his name. In 1948, Palestine changed its name. In both cases, the new name was the same. What was it, Jay? Israel. Israel, yes. Founded in the 12th century, this city on the Irish Sea is the capital of Northern Ireland. What is it, Josh? Dublin. No, sorry. Southwestern. Oh, we stumped you on Belfast. Of man's first disobedience and the fruit of that forbidden tree, whose mortal taste brought death into the world and all that woe, sing, heavenly muse. What epic poem first published in 1667 begins with these lines? I know that every one of you has read Paradise Lost by John Milton. Hannibal was a general in the Second Punic War. In what war was his father Hamilcar Barca a general? Josh. The first Punic War? The first Punic War. Yes, before the Civil War, he was superintendent of West Point. After the war, he became president of Washington College in Lexington, Virginia. Who was this Confederate general? Jenna. Lee. He's the one. Yes, in Latin, it means kidnapping, and it's the worst form of literary theft. So we're going for plagiarism. Now, that sound takes us to the end of the round and to our first break. Gives everyone a chance to relax for a bit. We'll be back with more of Westfield Insurance Brain Busters. But first, here's an important message from our sponsor, Westfield Insurance. 
Hi, I'm Jane Copenheffer of the Insurance Alliance of Central Pennsylvania, a Westfield Agency partner located in Camp Hill, bringing you the sharing knowledge building trust question. True or false, when it comes to your home insurance policy, it doesn't matter whether or not your garage is attached to your house. For the answer and a chance to win a flip cam, visit westfieldinsurance.com slash brainbusters. Good afternoon, my name is uh, Mark Herricker. I am the uh, alternate for the Cedar Cliff Brain Buster team. Uh, the Cedar Cliff Technology Students Association members attended the TSA National Conference in Baltimore and made it to the finals in four of the seven events entered. These students won at the regional and state levels of competition to get to the national level. We'd like to wish the other teams good luck and back to you, Rich. Thank you, Mark, and thank you for staying with us. It's very early in the game, but we have a terrific competition beginning after our first round of play between Cedar Cliff and Southwestern. But these teams could not be here without some other very important people. So let's first say hello to Mrs. Audrey Plazio. She is the coach from Cedar Cliff. You teach biology. And I'm always curious, Mrs. Plazio, I mean, these are obviously very talented people who multitask at every minute. How can you attract these people to participate in something, an activity like this, when there's so a plethora of activities from which to choose. There really are, and there, it's a very talented team that I have. Every year I seem to get a very talented team, this year in particular, very proud of my team. I just advertise a lot, and it does bring the kids in. This year we had over 15 kids trying out. And you ended up with this uh, group with of this five. Ended up with this group of five kids. And I'm next to you is kids. one of the five uh, players. It is. This is Mark Character. He's the team's alternate. And Mark, it, this is a special moment for you and basic for me and for the show because yeah. you're a freshman. I and am. Four years ago, you actually appeared on the show, but in a different venue. And uh, tell us about this experience. Well, in fifth grade, I uh, entered a competition to uh, be on the show in the uh, the finale, I believe it was, and I got to. Uh, I, I had a minute to answer as many questions as I could, and for each question, I got a $5 gift card to... To Boscov's. Boscov's. Yes, you did. Yes. yes, very good. You did quite well, and it's nice to see you here now as a real player on the show. It's nice to be back. Congratulations. Thanks for coming back, and sort of full circle. Now, moving on to Southwestern, we're going to say hello to Miss Melissa Wilson, and you are the gifted support teacher. And, and the same question, if I may pose to you. I mean, obviously, you know most of these, because I'm sure so many of them are in the gifted program, but they, too, are involved in sports and other activities. How do you attract such a fine group? It hasn't been a problem. They're very excited about it, and they make time in their busy schedules for it. Fantastic. Well, we really appreciate it. Next to you is the team's alternate. This is the first time that Joey Sheldon is here, and he's a junior. And, and, and Joey, you told me before the show that you really like science so much mm -hmm. that you are one of the few who participate in science fair. Do you, yes. Why is it? Why is science fair such a, a dying art, if you will, or, or has a, a well, lack I, of interest? I think that, I don't know, I, I just like science. Are you I'm, going to be participating this year in the science fair? Yes, I am. Do you already have some ideas uh, brewing in your uh, well, mind? I think I'm going to do something with like radiation or something. Fantastic. Well, we wish you luck. Thank you for coming here today you. to support your team. Now let's get back to work. It's time for today's one-on-one -on -one rapid fire. Another opportunity for us to talk to the students and learn what's going on in their very busy lives. Kafwi Jaka, senior over at Cedar Cliff. You've been here before. This is, you know, old uh, territory for you. But you're now the co-editor of the school paper. So inquiring minds want to know, are there any uh, features, any investigations uh, that you're doing, perhaps, that you're going to be featuring in the next paper? Um, well, we don't have any investigations, but we do have a major construction project at our school, which we are looking at. Um, and it affects all different aspects of our school life. So we really want to comment on that. And, uh, bring the other perspectives from the, the, uh, the company's perspective as well as the administration to the uh, student body. Is, is uh, somebody keeping a photo journal of what uh, is taking place? Yes, we're taking some very good pictures of that. All right, fantastic. Nice to have you here again, uh, Kafwi. And uh, Robert Story, you're a senior over at Southwestern, and acting is really important to you. And in fact, you're going to be in the fall play. So here's an opportunity. Let's uh, plug uh, Southwestern's fall play. What is it this uh, year? Southwestern will be doing a production of Get Smart based off the 60s television show. And this is a little comedy. Yeah, yeah, very, very much so. And um, it's going to be uh, November 18th, 19th, and 
opinion. So. All right, fantastic. All right, here's a little plug. I hope people come and see it. Robbie and Kafui, let's put you two one on one. Boeing Aircraft, Starbucks, Nirvana, Space Needle, Puget Sound. What's the city, Kafui? Seattle. Seattle, yes. He died in 1649, the first English king to be deposed, convicted of treason, and beheaded. Who was he? We stumped you on Charles I of England. And finally, Stone Mountain in Georgia and Mount Rushmore in South Dakota are both carved from the same kind of rock. What is it? Goff? Goff? Stone? No, sorry. Robbie. Uh, the answer is granite. Nice job, 80 to 50, as we say hello to Josh Moyer, senior and uh, uh, the captain of the Cedar Cliff Brain Busters team. And you have um, hobbies, uh, helicopters, aviation, and airplanes, and uh, your, I, I, I assume your life's dream is going to come to fruition upon leaving uh, Cedar Cliff. I can certainly hope so. I applied to Kent State University, Kent campus, in September, and I was accepted. So uh, fingers crossed that's where I'll, I'll be attending. And why Kent State? Uh, there's a specific reason, I assume. Kent State offers a major in aeronautics with focuses in both aviation management and air traffic control because I cannot decide which ones I would want to do yet. Aviation management incorporates a, a business aspect as well as flying, which is one of my greatest passions. And air traffic control, boy, you have to be really focused. Che Jubb, senior over at Southwestern and the team's captain, physics and engineering. That's, you're really interested in that. When did you become interested in physics and or engineering uh, as a from, pursuit? I took a physics class junior year and I just loved it. Like it was probably my favorite class in high school and I hope to do something within college. And any colleges that you have your eye on? No, not yet. Not yet. Well, I'm sure many have their eye on you. Okay. Che and Josh, let's fly through these three questions as we put you to one on one. They were the Arab Berbers of Northern Africa who conquered Spain in the 8th century. In lit Che. The Moors. The Moors in literature, of course, the most famous one was probably Othello. In 2009, Wikipedia posted the 10 original ink blots online, along with the most common responses to them. Josh? Rorschach. Rorschach was the test, is absolutely correct. And finally, between Andrew Jackson in 1837 and Theodore Roosevelt in 1909, only one U.S. president served two consecutive full terms in office. Who was he? If you go back in history and you remember 1869 to 1877, you'll remember Ulysses S. Grant. 90 to 60, great game going as we say hello to Jenna Fleming. You're a junior over at Cedar Cliff. It's great to have you here. Now, history is really important to you, and in fact, you're so impassioned about it. You were involved in, in a competition? Yes, um, I've always been really interested in history, and last year I participated in the National History Day competition, and I created a website on the innovations and impacts of the bicycle. And um, I actually won first place at the local level. And with that, you were able to go to the regional level? Uh, the state level of competition. Oh, the state. Is this something that you're going to pursue this year as well, Jenna? Yes, it is. Oh, fantastic. Well, I wish you luck. I uh, hope it works out as just as well, or if not better. Carly Snyder, senior over uh, at Southwestern. It's great to have you here for the first time. And boy, you have, I mean, we all look forward to our winter vacation, but you really have something to look forward to. Oh, yes. I'm going to Paris and London for nine days this winter break. I'm now, is this your first time in Europe? Yes, it is. Are you going with your family? or? I'm going the through the school. A um, big group of friends, and um, Mr. Ecker is taking us. Oh, d is he the French teacher? No. Do you speak, do you speak <laughs> French? No. No? Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. Every, hey, it seems like everyone seems to speak English, but... Bonne chance with these three questions for Carly and Jenna, the two ladies today on our show. In February 1945, Churchill, Roosevelt, and Stalin met at this Russian seaport. Yalta. Jenna. Yalta. Yalta is absolutely mm -hmm. correct for the post-war world. Romeo and Juliet is about two families called the Montagues and Capulets. What play by Thornton Wilder tells the story of the Gibb and Webb families? Oh, it's a classic play, and it's called Our Town. And finally, Newton called it quantity of motion. What is this product of mass and velocity? Oh, I, I think science might be a challenge for both of you, and it's linear momentum. We would have accepted momentum. Finally, let's meet our last players, Jacob Weymouth. And this is your first time here, and you're a senior, and it's a pleasure to have you at Studio A. And uh, you have terrific plans. You're said you're naval officer. Yes. Are, are you a member of JROTC currently? Yes, I am. Have you always been interested in uh, the Navy? For, uh, for quite a while now. 
And uh, are you, everything's all set for your future then, huh? You're I've ready to go? I've applied to Annapolis. We're playing the waiting game now. Oh, I see. I don't think there'll be much problem. Is this something in your family? Is this a tradition in your no, family? No, not really. It's, it's me. It's oh. me. <laughs> all right. Well, it's great having a strong interest and passion, and it's great to have you here. We're having a good time. Hamid Syed, you are a senior from Southwestern, and what a wonderful opportunity to, to meet you because uh, you're not really a native of uh, the United States. Where were uh, you born? I was born in Ottawa, Canada. In Ottawa, Canada. So uh, just out of curiosity, what brought you to the, our great country? Uh, my parents got a job here. Now, now with the, you, you can, that's a good reason. With Canada, you can keep your Canadian passport. Yep. So you have basically dual citizenship. Yeah, I'm dual citizen. So you can. Do you miss Canada at all? Uh, yeah. Every summer we usually visit. You do. Okay. Well, Hamid and Jacob, let's put you two one on one. Dostoevsky, Van Gogh, Julius Caesar, and Alexander the Great all suffered from this neurological disorder that causes seizures and unconsciousness. What is it, Jacob? Epilepsy. Epilepsy is correct. Because of global warming, climatologists have warned that within 50 years, these mountains may lose their snow-capped peaks, and Mont Blanc won't be so Blanc anymore. What mountain range is this, Jacob, again? The Alps. The Alps, you're correct again. And finally, the common man is as apt a subject for tragedy as kings were he said of Willie Loman in Death of a Salesman. Who is this American playwright? Oh, he's the great Arthur Miller. 120 to 60. Uh, Cedarcliff has a strong lead, but we're going to see what happens as we pick up the pace and play today's 60-second team lightning round. So, Che, it is up to you to select first among these three quizzes. We have trivia for the <laughs> L of it, the unquiz, words and music. Trivia for the elevate, the unquiz, words and music. Well, we'll go with the elevate. The elevate, <laughs> all right. For 10 points each, we'd like you to identify these people, places, and things whose names all begin with the letter L. So, Che, I take your answer as the team's answer. Robbie, Carly, and Hamid are going to help you along. We have 60 seconds put on the clock, and we'll begin now. It's a bad car, a citrus fruit. Lemon. Lemon. Lemon is correct. The 16th president of the United States. Lincoln. Lincoln is correct. PB is the symbol for this chemical element. Lead. Lead is correct. The largest island in the continental U.S. part of New York City. Long Island. Long Island, yes. This crustacean is often seen swimming Lobster. in butter. Lobster. Lobster, yes. In the Old Testament, his wife was turned into a pillar of salt. Lot. Lot, yes. Nitrix oxide, common name for? Laughing gas. Laughing gas. Satan before he was Satan. Lucifer. Correct. The star of the aviator in Titanic or the artist who painted the Last Supper. Leonardo DiCaprio. That is correct. A building entrance <laughs> or a special interest group? Lobbyist. Lobby, yes. The capital of Luxembourg. Pass. Luxembourg. He wrote <laughs> Lady Chatterley's Lover. Pass. Lawrence. It's bordered by Syria, Israel, and the Mediterranean Sea. Le Lebanon. Lebanon, yes. He created the modern system for classifying plants and animals. Pass. Linnaeus. The equator is zero. The poles are 90 degrees of this. Latitude. Latitude. Latitude is correct. He got swept away by a landslide in the 1936 presidential election. It was Alf Landon. Well done, some good teamwork, 12 correct, so 120 points came your way. Cedarcliff, it's up to you with the unquiz and words and music. Words and music, please. Words and music. There are lots of words in the musical vocabulary, even for music without words. So for 10 points each, identify each of these musical terms. So Josh, I take your answer as the team's answer. Kafwi, Jenna, and Jacob are going to help you along. <coughs> 60 seconds on the clock, and we'll begin now. The principal note in a composition or part of a piano. Key. Key is correct. The Italian word for drums are the drums in an orchestra. Timpani. Timpani, yes, the lowest male voice. Bass. Bass. Bass, yes. From the Italian for above, it's the highest female voice. Soprano. Soprano, yes. Originally accompanied by a lyre, they're the words to a song. Lyrics. Lyrics, Lyrics yes. The symbol raises a note half a step. Sharp. Sharp, yes. The Italian word for time is the rate of which a piece Tempo. of music is played. Tempo. The Italian for song, it's a solo song in an opera. <laughs> Aria. Aria, yes. Five horizontal lines and the spaces between them. Staff. Staff, yes. The clarinet and saxophone belong to this group Woodwinds. of instruments. Woodwinds, yes. A percussion instrument or the Italian word for softly. Piano. Piano. Piano, yes. It's an interval of eight diatonic tones. Octave. Octave, yes. Italian for increasing. It's a gradual increase Crescendo. in volume. Crescendo, yes. The Italian word for booklet. It's the text of an opera. Operetta. Libretto, the interval between D to F and G to B. Pass. A third, the Latin word for works or a musical work named for it is opera. 
Well done. We had 13 correct, so 130 points came your way, 250 to 180. I'm now going to reveal today's bonus Brain Buster category, and that's presidential assassinations. We'll see what our teams know about that interesting topic when Westfield Insurance Brain Busters continues. Good afternoon. I'm Walt Graves. I'm the principal of Southwestern High School. Southwestern High School has a broad curriculum of over 150 courses and independent studies that are designed to meet the comprehensive needs of our students, including honors programs in English, math, social studies, and science, and also including seven advanced placement courses. Good luck to both teams. Go Mustangs. Back to you, Rich. Thank you, Mr. Graves, and thank you for staying with us for our competition between Cedar Cliff and Southwestern. But before the action resumes, here's a chance for you to play along with our Shippensburg Pop Quiz, brought to you by Shippensburg University, hosting an admissions open house on Saturday, December 4th. That's Saturday, December 4th, where you can talk with faculty and students, tour the campus, and learn more about the SHIP experience. You can register at ship.edu. And now let's head over to that great campus to meet another great professor for today's question. She is known as the first industrial organizational psychologist. She applied psychology to time and motion studies. She was made famous in the book Cheaper by the Dozen because she combined a successful work career with raising 12 children. Who is this famous woman? I like this question. Now, if you know the answer or would like to see the question again, please log on to WGAL.com slash BrainBusters. The winner will be selected in a random drawing among all correct responses received before Friday's News 8 at 5. You can win some awesome Shippensburg apparel. Plus, you can email me with any questions or comments about the show. All right, let's get back into this game. Cedar Cliff has a formidable lead of 70 points to uh, Southwestern's 180, 250 to 180, but everything can change now with our bonus brain buster. Our teams wagered from 0 to 50 points based on their knowledge of presidential assassinations. Let's head over to Lori Burkhalter in the newsroom who has today's question. Lori? Thanks, Rich. Now here's your bonus brain buster question. Abraham Lincoln was shot at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. In what city was President William McKinley shot at the Pan American Exposition of 1901? Again, Abraham Lincoln was shot at the Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. In what city was President William McKinley shot at the Pan American Exposition of 1901? Good luck. Let's head back to you, Rich. Thank you, Lori Burkhalter. Good luck, teams. We'll give you about five seconds. Okay, time is up. Both teams are going to let uh, Che finish writing his answer. Okay, if you can close your pen, can we do that? All right, Josh, of course, this happened September 6, 1901 at the Temple of Music. It was in St. Louis. No, it was not. I'm sorry. We're going to have to deduct 30 points from your score, taking you to 220. Good strategic uh, bet. Dallas, no, I'm sorry. It's in Buffalo, New York, taking you down to 130, 220 to 130. Who's going to come back uh, for round two and challenge Northeastern? Well, we're going to find out right now with today's final frenzy 20 point questions. Here we go. This 1759 battle fought on the Plains of Abraham, established British control over North America. What city did the British capture? Jacob. Quebec. Quebec is correct. In Roman numerals, the letter D stands for 500. If the letter D has a line over it, what is it equal to? Jay. 50,000. Nope, sorry, incorrect. Cedar Cliff. Josh. 5,000. Nope, it's 500,000 or half a million. Bile is produced in the liver. In what organ of the body is bile stored? Che. Gallbladder. Gallbladder, yes. Resistance is the force which opposes the flow of an electric current. What name is given to the reciprocal of the resistance, Josh? Volt. Nope, no, nope. sorry. Mm -hmm. Southwestern. Correct answer is conductance. If you were to judge only by the six wives of Henry VIII, what was the most popular name for girls in 16th century England, Jenna? Catherine. Catherine, of course. Bora Peak is its highest mountain. Hell's Canyon on the Snake River is its deepest point. Which U.S. state is it, Josh? Nevada. Nope, not Nevada. Mm, Southwestern. Robbie. Arizona. No, you're both incorrect. It's Idaho. Emperor of Rome after Tiberius. He was ruthless, erratic, and probably insane. What, Jacob? Caligula. Caligula is correct. His stories were famous for their surprise endings. Among the more familiar are The Last Leaf and The Gift of the Magi. Who wrote them? Oh, Henry. Jenna. 
Oh, Henry. Oh, Henry. William Sidney Porter is his real name. Oh, Henry is correct. On the ancient Roman calendar, October, November, and December were the 8th, 9th, and 10th months. What was the first month on that ca calendar? Coffee? March. March was indeed, yes. The title takes its name from the nursery rhyme Humpty Dumpty. What is this 1947 Pulitzer Prize winning novel by Robert Penn Warren? Josh. All the King's Men. You are correct. At constant temperature, the volume of a gas is inversely proportional to the pressure. Whose law is this? Che. Boils. Boils, yes. In 1869, it became the first territory to allow women to vote. When it entered the Union, in Che. Wyoming. Wyoming is correct. Used by primitive hunters to make knives, arrowheads, and other tools. It's the judge. Obsidian. Obsidian is the black volcanic glass. The tangent of the second quadrant angle is negative one. Its cotangent is also negative one. What angle is it? Josh. 90 degrees? Nope. No, sorry. J. 135. 135 is correct. Nick Park has won several Academy Awards for his claymation stories of an eccentric inventor and a sensible dog, Robbie. Rawlis and Gromit. Rawlis and Gromit. It pitted German princes and foreign powers against the Habsburg family and the Holy Roman Empire. What war was fought from 1618 to 1648? Josh. The Austro Hungarian War? Mm -mm, sorry. Oh, yeah. Southwestern Che. About 30 years worth? You are correct. Yes, it happens twice a year in June and December when the sun seems to be over. The solstice is absolutely correct, right on the buzzer. Well, that sound takes us to the end of the round and to the end of the game. It looks like Cedarcliff really came through, and they're going to be back for round two. We hope you'll be back in just a second or two. Congratulations, Cedarcliff. They really played a competitive game, had the lead, and would not let go. We thank Southwestern for being here, but we're going to have to say goodbye to them. On the next Westfield Insurance Brain Busters, we're very excited to welcome Wes Perry at Harrisburg Academy. At the end of our tournament, one team will win $5,000 in scholarship to Shippensburg University, plus the top four winning teams will walk away with a grants totaling $15,000 from our corporate sponsor, Westfield Insurance. We hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Make Brain Busters a habit. So long.